Welcome to Marketing Monday. We got a bunch of stuff to get to, so let's jump right into it. Today, we'll start with the wins and fails of the past fucking two, three weeks. The past two, three weeks of wins and fails, starting with a very long overdue win for a group of people that never seems to get a win in this country, and that is Rich Idiots. Rich Idiots have a huge win in the past week because there was the release of Diablo Immortal. <laughs> uh, a game that requires up to $110,000 to fully upgrade your character. And you know what? People who are extra rich and extra dumb have needed a sink like this. It just can't be a normal level of gotcha. It really needs to be $110,000 plus. And you know what's great about it? Is that the first 10,000 will get you like 80% of the way there. There is a single perk for basically 1% reduced incoming damage that costs $50,000 alone. <laughs> a single perk! Now, it is a little odd that Blizzard has pivoted so hard into a gotcha based five star rolling pay to win MMO, I mean, no uh, mobile game. When they put out this commercial Dad. just a few years ago. I'm getting wrecked. Can't I buy some stronger units? Your grandfather didn't give his life just so his grandson could pay money to be good at something. Dad. <laughs> Interesting commercial, Blizzard. <laughs> and that was from, uh, uh, I think, 2017, only a few years ago. And now, all of a the sudden, they've changed their ways. Speaking of corporations doing the right thing, I want to give a big win to companies that really believe in their employees, that that take a chance on them, you know? And that's why I want to give another win to the company Bolt, which loaned its own employees thousands of dollars to buy Bolt stock, then fired them, and the stock crashed. <laughs> wow. Really love that corporate responsibility. Uh, basically making money off of their own employees <laughs> as loan sharks. They're a fintech startup, and this is like one of the greatest financial gamesmanship I've ever seen. What a genius, genius strategy. Company level rug pull. <laughs> yeah, they laid off a third of the company. They spent $1.5 billion to acquire a crypto startup right before. So they spent $1.5 billion to acquire a crypto startup, then fired everybody, <laughs> then asked for the money back after encouraging their employees to take out loans to invest in their own stock. Pretty much the whole thing seems fraudulent. Hopefully they get in some kind of trouble for this, but... So, uh, looking pretty bad, but you know what? Big win to them find out a new way to make money. Who cares about the morals? Uh, speaking of dystopias, let's give one more win. A triple, uh, opening with a triple win. And this one, <laughs> this also ties into crypto startups. This one comes to what I think is the single greatest LinkedIn post I've ever seen. And that's a high bar, because you guys know the content on LinkedIn is so fire. So I want to give a, a rare triple win here to Nicholas Virk, who dropped this banger. Uh, the year is 2030. It's a rainy Saturday afternoon. You've just finished mining 30 obsidian, obsidian ore playing Crypto Crush Saga. You open up the Elder Chains online and feel a rush of excitement. Your buddy from school has spent the last two years becoming a master blacksmith, and he's agreed to turn 10 obsidian ore into an obsidian battle staff. A huge upgrade over the mithril mace you've been wielding for the last few weeks. In the meantime, you hop into Clash of Guilds and use the remaining obsidian to upgrade your town hall to the next level. That should keep your village safe for now. You wish you could fast forward time to tonight. Your guild has plans to go for a deep run in the wilderness in old school rune chains. Tonight's objective is to kill the level 128 frost giant hiding in the Cave of Sorrow. He has a 5% chance of dropping an immaculate orb of brilliance, of which there are currently only four in existence. This orb can be used as a power source in the upcoming space exploration game and should give your guild a great advantage in reaching distant galaxies first. In the distance, you hear a faint, blockchain doesn't bring anything new to games. You shrug and join your friends in the Discord voice channel. Life is good. Hashtag blockchain gaming. <laughs> I can't believe he just verbatim described what I think is the most horrific dystopia. <laughs> And this was all a good thing. When I was reading this for the first time, I thought it was a joke. This is him describing his ideal future. This is the good future in blockchain. <laughs> I mean, th this is describing a world in which I'm spending every second of my day doing fucking mobile game tasks 
Where every one of my friends and family is fucking working in Elder Chains online. Uh, so I basically, I thought that post was like dystopia rebranded. Let's get to an actual fail. Let's get to an actual fail. And that fail is, how do I say this? Okay, when you look back on all of the recessions, there is one indicator, one good leading indicator that could have been used to figure out if we were about to head into sort of a market downturn or crash. You guys know what it is? You guys have any, can you have any guess? The answer is what I'm calling the make it clap index, AKA strippers. And guess what? They're incredibly down. This is the fail. All strippers are noticing a market loss in income. There's no better indicator that inflation is up, incomes are down, savings are down, that people are not tossing money at strippers in clubs. Pretty, a pretty interesting forward-looking indicator that people are not willing to spend. Consumer confidence. <laughs> we gotta help them out, boys. <laughs> Rochelle. <laughs> so what that means is, we can stop a recession by all going to strip clubs non-stop. As long as we keep the clubs full and we're tossing tens, at least a five, we can stop recessions. Holy shit, it's brilliant. While I'm on the subject, let's get a little serious here. Uh, we are probably, almost certainly actually, uh, heading into a uh, recession environment. And the data is not looking good. Okay. Consumers are spending up a storm on credit. People had large savings during COVID. During 2020, 2021, people actually put a lot of money into savings. All of that money is now gone. Savings are dried up. People have an incredibly low savings rate and people spending on credit cards and debt is as at multi-year highs. Also ramping up another form of debt, debt rebranded that I've been talking about, which is called buy now, pay later. Now I've done a lot of marketing money talking about what a scam buy now, pay later is, but I want to give, <laughs> you know how the enemy of my enemy is my friend? I don't like this announcement but I'm gonna give it a win because it is absolutely going to destroy Klarna and Afterpay. And that is Apple's announcement that they're getting into this business. <laughs> Apple has announced Apple Pay Later, which is gonna be the exact same thing as Klarna and Afterpay, but on every goddamn iPhone in the world. In the very short term, it's a win because I got to watch Klarna and Afterpay uh, valuations tumble instantly. <laughs> on the other flip side, this is gonna be an even bigger problem. And I can't do enough, I can't stress enough how much buy now, pay later is just a fancy way of saying debt. <laughs> they talk again about zero fees, uh, zero interest, but that, the fine print tells a different story. So uh, win for them, I guess. Uh, speaking of huge companies that are no longer fucking around, let's give a win to Sony. The console wars have gotten serious because they must have, because Sony just announced they're building new space lasers. <laughs> so if you're an Xbox fan, I would get a titanium roof or sell your fucking console. I would watch out. So Sony's building space lasers, and I know they're going to be able to afford it, because we all know that the Morbius re-release went so well. We know that after making trillions of dollars the first time, and then definitely understanding that it, it wasn't just a big joke at their expense, but truly a groundswell movement to support Morbius to the top of the charts. They decided to re-release Morbius into 1,000 theaters where it made an average of $82 per theater. <laughs> uh, but I think the funniest thing that I saw was this which was a change.org petition that says, we were all busy that weekend. Please bring Morbius back to the theater a third time. <laughs> and I think we should all sign it because honestly, I didn't know about the re-release. Of course I would have seen it. Sony, please, one more time, please. That's all we need. We'll definitely go this time. We promise. Come on, one more time. Bring it back. It'll work for sure. Uh, and then finally, I'm going to end wins and fails because this has been a good one with uh, our fucking with our new segment. You know it. You love it. It is, of course, what's up, Beijing? What's up, Beijing? Thank you, Z. <laughs> We're going to find out what's up in Beijing. It was going to be a win, 
if I did the marketing Monday on Monday. It is now a fail, but I'll say it like it's a win. There is a um, technology company called Arm that makes chips. Basically, it's very hard for most companies to do business in China unless they give a large cut of what they're doing to China. China does not allow foreign businesses to just exist and make money. So when Arm, this technology company, wanted to do business in China, they had to create a separate entity called Arm China that had its own CEO, its own board of directors, but it still like reported a backup into Arm. It was part of Arm, but it was a separate Chinese-based company. Well, one day they wanted to fire the CEO of Arm China and he said no. <laughs> And so when they said, okay, but you know, we, you're using our name, we're Arm, <laughs> this is our company. He said, no, we're separate, it's my company. And they had a basically a two year battle to try and kick him out. And then finally, a few days ago, they announced they'd finally removed him. They would finally found a way, they found an agreement with China that we're gonna get rid of him and put a new CEO. Until like literally <laughs> two days ago, they realized that he said no again. <laughs> And in fact, doubled down and is basically holding a mutiny with the employees of that company, refusing to work and got like the papers or something that give him a right to own the business. And so he's literally not leaving and they can't really physically remove him. They don't know how to get rid of him. So yeah, in late April this is what I was going to report on. It appeared that they were victorious and they had him ousted, but uh, it turns out he's still got some fight. <laughs> Uh, it's funny. I think they sent a new CEO to replace him. And when the guy got there, the old CEO fired him <laughs> and said, no, it's still mine. And so in my what's up Beijing update, I just want to give you an update on that. But that's the end of wins and fails. Boom. Major win. Let's see how Alan Wu handles it. Now we get into the actual thing we haven't done in months. A real marketing Monday.